Hi everybody, welcome to Hammond Urban Homestead. I was asked the other day, what do I do to keep my paperwork side of the rabbit barn um, situated? So let's go over it real quick. There's going to be a few items, I'm going to list them now, that you're going to want for your um, office space or just for organization. So you're going to want a clipboard and piece of paper just so you can take stuff back and forth from your rabbit barn to the house or the garage or whatever. Now, another thing you're going to want to do is have some notebooks and a binder with those clear plastic envelopes that you can slide your pedigrees in, a whiteboard, and your basic pens, pencils, whatever. Just kind of like a normal desk. Now, <clears throat> a calendar. A calendar's nice. Not gonna lie. I have a weekly planner that has big giant boxes for every day. And I will make Thursdays my clean out day or anything barn related. So if I have to tattoo rabbits, I do it on a Thursday. If I have to clip nails and stuff, Thursday. That day is dedicated to the barn. There's there's over 30 animals on my property. Uh, 30. There's more than 30 some rabbits that I keep. So it's a big chore. Not gonna fib on that one, but. It's easier when you have a day dedicated to that chore day or, you know, before or after work or whatever you guys do that you can sit there and go through your barn and do the things you need to do. Now, I know not everybody has that opportunity, so take what I say with a grain of salt because we all live different lives. Now... I'm going to go from nesting box to weighing and grow outs to pedigrees, breeding organization, and um, we'll do it in that order. And we'll see if I can get this video made. <laughs> so, uh, nesting box. Once the babies are born and they're in the nesting box, I will do my first check and I just kind of just take a look if there's any um, afterbirth or deceased little ones, I take them out. Um, everything that's squirming and jumping at me, I leave in there. I call it angry popcorn. <clears throat> and then every week after that, I will, or not every week, <laughs> every day, I'll check the box once a day. Um, if it's cold, I kind of delay it a little bit so I don't open up their little nest and all the heat comes out. Now, I'll check them every day. If any are have passed away, I take them out. Because you're going, that was a pig of burp. Um, you're going to lose babies through the process of them growing. It kind of just happens at this point. Um, uh, survival of the fittest. That's what I say a lot. But what I end up doing is I just keep track. I check on them, see if they got full little bellies and make sure the moms are feeding them. You can go into a domesticated rabbit nest. They're not going to abandon their babies. I've never had a rabbit abandon her babies because I touch them. Because I touch her, I touch her food, I touch her water, I clean her cage. They're used to me and the children and everybody else. So the further I go, um, the older they get, then we go through the whole, hey, they jump out. We're going to take the nesting box out so we don't end up having any that get, um, chilled or anything when they're bigger when they have fur that's like two or three weeks old now I start weighing them at eight weeks 
once I, they're weaned and taken away from mom. They get weighed once a month. And I have that documented in a notebook. And what I'll do is just put down the ear tattoo or the name of the bunny and the date that they were first, the date of the weighing with lines all going across the paper, date of the weighing, and then write down their weights. And I'll go through that and do that. Sometimes I'll weigh them a little bit more often and keep track of it. And I'll write down that date of the weigh and who I weighed. So it kind of gets a little bit jumbled, but it's always right next to the rabbit that the weight came from. Now, um, once my rabbits hit senior weight and they're dose, they get bred and um, it varies on age with the breeding, but I always go by the senior weight now instead of just age. And my rabbits have been hitting senior weight earlier now than before, which is great. I think it's the feed I've been giving them and I'm really happy with it. So now we're going to go on to breeding them. I will pick a buck for that month. I have a habit of favoring a buck for a couple breedings or that month's breeding or whatever. So Seward got used a lot. He's from uh, Vernon Brown's uh, Brownies Bunnies over in um, Maine. So he's been used a lot. And then I have Blue, my buck I got from um, Jonas from Healing Acres Farm. So um, those ones have been favored a lot this year. Some of my original or some of my new stock my newer buck, um, Short Cummins, he, he's been one of my ones I'm really looking forward to next year using for breeding. I did one litter back to his mom and it was a really good turnout. So I'm excited about using him next year as well, but to go on, I'll pick a buck that I want to use. I'll breed two does to him. Um, sometimes I'll use my sisters, I have a, a pair of sisters, and I'll breed them at the same time to that buck, and um, they end up being really good foster moms as well for each other if one has a larger litter. So you always want to breed more than one doe at a time. It will save you in the long run if you have to foster some kids over to another doe. And then <clears throat> another, <clears throat> my throat. Um, and then I'll write that down on my, you'll see right up there, it says Seward, and then it says the does, the date they were bred, their due date, the date that the babies are born. Now you can do this in a notebook as well, as long as you don't lose your notebook. I... I can't lose a whiteboard, it's on my wall. So we go on from there. When the babies are born, I once they're eight weeks, I'll type up pedigrees, type in the ear tattoo of who I'm keeping or who's a potential sell to another um, person that wants to get into breeding rabbits. And then I will keep a hold of that pedigree until the rabbit's purchased or um, otherwise if I'm keeping it or butchering it. If they're in the call pens, I don't write pedigrees for them. They will all have ear tattoos. So that's kind of how I do my whole barn um, when it comes to my paperwork. It helps me out a lot. I hope it helps everybody else out. And I hope you guys... Just have a great day. <laughs> Bye.